Hello and welcome to Code Basics Coding Tutorial. Today we are going to dive into numbers in Julia. I have Julia command prompt open and I recommend you guys open it as well and practice it as you watch this tutorial. Okay, there are two types of numbers in Julia integers and floats. Integers are the whole numbers and float numbers are the ones which has fraction to it. Let me create two variables with the uh, two different values. The first one I created is a whole number. It doesn't have any fraction to it. That's why this number is an integer number. I just assigned that to a variable called a. The second number is having a fraction to it that's why it is called a float number if you want to know the type of a variable you can use function type of this is an inbuilt function in Julia that will tell you the type of uh, the variable it is saying integer 64 the number 64 here means that I'm running on a 64 bit operating system. If you are having 32 bit operating system, then this will be 32. How do you know that I have 64 bit operating system? There is another way to know, which is word underscore size. This is a constant in Julia, which will tell you the number of bits in your system. All right, let me now figure out the type of B. The so type of B, which is 2.5, is float64. Okay, now you can use Julia as a simple calculator to do certain basic mathematical operation. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate them. This is same as what you do on your regular calculator, right? Uh, when you do division, you get float number as a result back. If you want to just get the integer part of it, then you can use a division uh, function. The better example would be 5 by 2. So you see the difference between doing this versus this. This gives you integer result, this gives you a float result. You can do certain other operations such as multiplication, you can do uh, power of a number so 2 raised to power of 3 is 8 you can even figure out the remainder of a division okay if I do 5 percent to 2 I will get 1 okay Julia supports bitwise operators as well what it means is you are doing uh, certain operations with the bit representation of a number now, first of all, if you want, want to find out bit representation of a number, you can use this uh, inbuilt function called bits. This will give you a bit representation, the binary representation. This is how number look like when it is stored internally in computer memory. Okay, similarly, if you say bits six, it will look like this. You notice one one zero here. And the total number of bit count here is 64 because I have 64 bit operating system. If you have 32 bit, you will see 32 bit here. All right. Uh, let's do bitwise AND operation. The way you do it is by using AND operator. So I'm doing AND between 3 and 5. So let's see how the bit representation looks for 3 and 5. So as you notice here, it is 011 and 101. So when you do n between these two, what you will get is one and one will be one, one zero will be zero, and this will be zero. So the end result is one. Okay. You can also do bitwise or operator. For or, you use this pipe character. For doing XOR, you have to use a dollar sign so two dollar four means doing x or between two and four there are uh, arithmetic shift operator as well 
so if you want to shift the bits of number six by one position to the right side you have to use this uh, particular operator it's a closing angle bracket so as you see in the diagram it will move the bit rep representation of number six uh, by one position to the right side similarly if you want to use the bit stream to the left side by let's say one position you say this is my original number and move it to left by one position and you get four okay uh, now we quickly covered integer and float types but how do I know the maximum capacity of these numbers or minim minimum number that they support? There is another built-in function called type max. So when you say type max integer 64, this will tell you the maximum number supported by this particular type, which is integer 64. So integer 64 supports this. This is pretty huge. Similarly, you can use type min and it will show you the minimum number supported by that particular type. Okay, let's do type max for float 64 to see how much capacity uh, Julia supports for float 64. And here it prints INF. What INF means is infinity. So in Julia, there are uh, two spatial float, float point values. One is infinity. And you know how you, what is the other way of to get infinity? Whenever you divide any number with zero, you get infinity as a result. So you're, you're getting INF here. The other spatial floating value, floating point value is NAN, which means not a number. And you get that when you do an operation like this. When you do uh, division of zero by zero, you you get a number that is not defined. That's why it says NAN, which means not a number. Okay. The last point we want to cover is numeric literal coefficient. What it means is this. Uh, in mathematics, you might have come across polynomial equations like this. 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Whenever you want to represent that into any programming language, you always use multiplication operator. Operator. Let me show you. I will create a variable called x and assign some value to it. And if you want to write this equation, you will, in any other programming language, do something like this. Right? This works in Julia, but Julia supports a better syntax, which is same as how you write mathematical equation, which is this. So you, as you see, I'm not using multiplication operator here and it will still work. It will give you the same result. So this is more readable and more convenient to use. Okay, that was all about numbers in Julia. Thanks for watching.